In this video, we will cover the basic workflow for creating end credit rolls in Cinecast. To begin, let's take a look at typical movie end credits. As you can see, the credits are actually made up of well-defined blocks. So here we have the first block, the second, the third, and so on. Looking at each block, we can see that it's comprised of a role entry, in this case associate producers, and one or more artist entries. If we draw small rectangles around each of the role and artist entries, the block structure is easier to see. We call each of these blocks a cluster, and each of the entries a cell. So a Cinecast project is simply a sequence of clusters comprising role and artist cells. OK, let's launch the application by double-clicking the Cinecast icon. Cinecast launches with the default preset or cluster layout. This is just one of a number of presets that you can select in Cinecast. So if you look at the toolbar, you can see that there are eight icons corresponding to the available presets. You can select side by side, one, two, three, four, and five cells per row, as well as freeform and graphics presets. You select a preset simply by clicking on its icon, or you can use the F1 to F8 function keys on the keyboard. So let's say we want to begin a project with the one cell per row preset. We simply click the corresponding icon and start typing. Pressing the Tab key moves us to the next cell. The Tab key will also automatically add new cells if required. Next, we want the four cells per row preset, so we click on its icon and start typing. and we'll center the last two entries. If we press the Enter key, we get a new cluster of the same preset type, but say we wanted the side-by-side -side preset next, we simply click on its icon and start typing. Now, in feature film end credits, the screen is sometimes split into two independent columns of clusters. Cinecast allows you to do this with a single mouse click. On the toolbar, we have three icons which allow you to set the workspace to left, center, or right column modes. If we click on the left column icon, you will note that the new cluster only occupies the left half of the screen. Let's select the one cell per row preset and start typing. The page automatically scrolls as you near the end. Now let's press the Enter key to add another one cell per row cluster. Next, we'll click on the right column icon to set the workspace to the right column mode. You will now note that the cluster only occupies the right half of the screen. Let's start typing. Now we'll press the Enter key to add another side-by-side -side cluster. Let's now reset the workspace to center column mode by clicking on the corresponding icon. Now we'll add a graphics cluster by clicking on its toolbar icon. Here we have a choice of three or one cell per row. We'll select three. Now to place a logo in a particular cell, we simply double click on that cell. 
This opens up a file requester. We'll select our logo and press the Enter key. Cinecast opens the graphics file and shows you the image properties. Press Enter and the logo is automatically scaled and inserted into the project. Finally, we want to add a freeform cluster, so we click on its icon. Here we have a choice of Roll or Artist font. We'll go with Roll font. Before we continue, let's save our project. Click on the Save icon, name our project, and press Enter. OK, now we're done, so let's preview our project. Simply click the Preview icon on the toolbar. This opens up a dialog box. Here we can select the video preset and the roll duration. We'll select the 1K preset. This panel shows the settings corresponding to this preset 1280 by 720 pixels, 59.94 Hz, progressive scan. The final panel allows you to select the roll duration. We can quickly scan the available options by sliding the duration control to the left or right. As you do, the settings for duration, lines per frame, and frame count change. We note that there are only a few duration options available on such a small project. However, if we now click the Enable Smart Stretch checkbox, we can see that the duration options dramatically increase. This is because we have now allowed Cinecast to micro-adjust the text height and the cell and cluster spacing. It is important to keep in mind that even with Smart Stretch enabled, Cinecast always scrolls an integral number of pixels per frame to avoid flicker. Now suppose we need the credit roll duration to be 16 seconds. We simply double click on the duration box and enter 16 seconds, 0 frames, separated by a colon, and press the tab key to exit the box. Cinecast displays the closest available duration to our target value, which in this case happens to be exactly 16 seconds. So let's go ahead and click OK. And here's our preview. You can pause and resume the preview by pressing the spacebar. Pause, resume. Pressing the home key restarts the preview. Pressing the down arrow key skips forward a screen page and pauses the preview. Likewise, pressing the up arrow key skips back a screen page and pauses the preview. To exit the preview at any time, press the escape key. These navigation controls are useful when you want to preview just a segment of the project. OK, let's resume our preview. All looks good, so let's export our project. We'll click on the Export icon. This brings up a dialog box. The top two panels are similar to those we saw in the preview dialog box. So let's select the same video preset and roll duration as we chose for the preview. Next we have the alpha channel, bit depth and motion blur settings. For now we shall leave these at their default values. The final settings determine the location and folder name of the export. These can be changed as required, but again we'll go with the suggested settings. So let's go ahead and click OK. The project is now being exported as a TIFF image sequence, ready for importing into the video editor timeline.